Good evening everybody and welcome along once again to One Hub Racing. This is the Prestige tier. It's round number 19. We're here in a very soggy Mexico City. It's a very different weather conditions to what we're used to in sunny Mexico today. It's absolutely pouring rain in the Autodrome Hermanos Rodriguez. Um, if you tried to watch the stream before, um, my PS4 shut itself off. It obviously doesn't want me to stream this race. But um, anyways... We're back once again. I missed the last two rounds, but joining me in the commentary box today is Jess. Alex has fallen out a hole again. Jess, welcome back. <laughs> yes, I wasn't expecting to join this week, but then Alex thought the race was so crazy. There was so much action happened last week that he fell into another hole and uh, no, no, it's no longer with us this week. But hopefully he'll be back next week. Yeah, so um, we have the... Const well, obviously the championship is wrapped up from a driver's perspective as Squeezy goes fastest, but the constructors battle is still very much on we have a battle between Sauber and Mercedes now out of those there are one of each car here today namely MLA and VSR Blizzard but uh, Mercedes can win today if Sauber do not outscore them by 14 so that pretty much means that Blizzard needs to finish a, a minimum of third and MLA needs to pretty much DNF or finish outside the top 10 and what a what a nice what a nice thing it'd be if MLA could take the constructors from Mercedes in his final season in one hub as well so it's going to be an interesting one Jess yes it will and uh, it can be possible for Blizzard to possibly uh, take this constructors to another to another race because MLA actually uh, DNF last week in the United States and uh, Blizzard also DNF and that's how GD won the title so Anything is possible. Anything is possible around here, and uh, Julian can now breathe it easy. Julian's not here. Um, usually, the, I don't know why he's not here, but he's not here. Um, so it's really up to M MLA, and uh, um, they will have free choice of tyres, obviously, due to the fact that it's wet condition. So probably breathe a sigh of relief. So uh, I don't think we'll see much people go on the hypers to start with, unless they're doing a two-stop. Yeah, two stop is one around here. The two stop is actually one that can work in your favour if you've got the pace. I can honestly see people like Blizzard perhaps going for that two stop. The um, it, it can be it, you are very very quick in the in the last part of the race, but you are gonna obviously have to take that extra stop compared to everybody else. So I think one or two might try it because I've seen it work for for others, but um, we'll see how it goes. Squeezy uh, right now he's out on pole by quite a margin. 124.4, Jess CP2, 124.8, and Blizzard, uh, 124.91, with the key to about four hundredths behind on a 124.95, and MLA on a 125, dead, which is very pleasing to my OCD. Yeah, I've never seen any lap times with a 125, or, uh, uh, with a flat time in ages, so, uh, MLA, you've done, you done, you done us proud, and, uh, at the moment, he's doing well to, uh, uh, secure his chances tonight, and uh, he's got he's got to do it for uh, Junior, who's not here tonight. And uh, yeah, L last week's race was quite interesting. And uh, Ogems actually won on track, but due to penalties, uh, McSendit won his home race. It was nice to see McSendit run his home race, to be honest. But uh, I, I, it'll be nice for um, Ogems to actually win this win a race. Maybe he could do it today. I don't know. Yeah, well, he's, bro he's broken. He broke our hearts in Hungary, and he's done it again last week now. So he should he should really have two wins on the board. But um, it's just those penalties. But again, he, he, Julian is here to well, either Julian nor McSendit is here to potentially take away a victory. So if he can get the pace together um, in the race, I think he's going to have a real opportunity against uh, the likes of Blizzard. But we'll see how he gets on on this quality lap first. As he comes through the stadium section, which is used is now well, it used to be a baseball field, if I'm not mistaken. They converted it into into a track for F1, and of course they're using it for Formula E as well. So that plenty going on in that stadium section, and it's obviously where the podium is as well. So it's got some great use. Schofield comes into the pit lane, just trying to see if anybody's on a lap. I think Blizzard might be on his way into the pits. We'll see as he comes through the last corner. Looks like he's going yeah. for a timed lap. He gets it all out of shape, but he comes to the line. It's a 123.7. He wow. knocks it out of the park, as we were just talking about baseball there. 123.7. That's nearly seven tenths of a second faster than 
Squeezy, Ollie popped into third place there. That is a, an immense time from Blizzard. That's amazing, amazing pace. But we'll see what the others can do because he's got now Oldems can actually follow Blizzard and follow his lines and see where he's gaining and losing time. I wonder if Blizzard is going to give, give his uh, VSR uh, compatriot a little bit of a toe. I have seen this in other leagues where some people have done that, but you never know. Blizzard doing well to uh, keep the hopes alive at the moment. I think the conditions are improving, I think. Or it's probably just Blizzard being very, very quick. Um, but I think it's probably the latter. I think he's like a quick guy around Mexico, like we've seen in the other leagues as well. He's really, really fast. There's a, everyone, I think, is going out on there. Out, out lap, so I think they've noticed Blizzard's poll time and responded to it basically. So, yeah. So I, I, I wonder how this is going to turn out. If it's going to get better, is it going to dry up? But it's not raining as hard as it was at the start of qualifying, I must say. No, you can see the dry line forming uh, in on the racing line there. You see how uh, Oldham's gets on. I just seen Rafa popped into second by two thousandths of a second. Uh, wow. over, over Squeezy, and then Oldham's comes line. I think he invalidated that lap actually uh, somewhere in the S section, but he is getting a toe off of Blizzard as you can see, because I think I, I think um, Oldham's actually gave Blizzard his setup, so um, Blizzard moves out of the way, gave him the toe down the straight, and Oldham's can now get himself onto a lap. But yeah, it's super super close between uh, Rafa and Squeezy. Um, anybody else? Jesse comes across the line. He can't improve his lap time. A couple of drivers, well, only Wayne has yet to set a lap. He's about to come through the stadium section, see how he gets on. Yeah, quite a few people are just, I think, wanting to get their laps in quickly uh, to make sure they get the best possible time. Only Wayne's not set a lap time at the moment, and... Uh, I think he's about to cross the line to set one. It might be validated. No, no it's not. He's a P7. So Oops. everyone set a lap time, which is good. Everybody has set a lap time, yeah. They have indeed. And they're not separated by much uh, in the grand scheme of things. It's about 1.2. No. About 1.2 from second down to 14. We're going to discount Blizzard because he's just a mile out in front at this point. But uh, <laughs> where is... Old M's. Old M's coming to the, through the last corner now. Let's see where his lap puts him. Just keeping an eye on the lap delta on his steering wheel. 22, 23, 24. He's going to go fourth fast. 24, 6, 6. And he just gets ahead of his teammate by three thousandths of a second. I must be running similar strategies or... Yeah, they must be running similar strategies because otherwise, wh why would they match lap time? So uh, you can tell these guys might be working together, but that was a good lap from uh, Odems as he's looking to uh, climb his way up from the standings. I do believe in the standings. Let me just check the standings quickly. Um, he is, or oh, it's right down the bottom, uh, is in P3 at the moment by around about 50, yeah, 15 points to MLA. So um, if, he, if, Mark, if Odems gets a better result than MLA, then uh, he could close the gap a little bit to them. Um, I think that's the only battle on the Drivers' Championship still to be decided. Because obviously, Junior's first, and uh, yeah, we've got five, five minutes to go, and uh, everyone is making sure they get that lap as MLA goes into the pits. And I think we've got a few people on set three currently. Um, I think Scope is on, on the lap at the moment as well. Yes, he is, as he's coming through the final corner. He's got, he's got his ERS at the moment all right, as comes across the line it doesn't look too bad um he only goes to 12 but he does improve by three temps so that makes the, the field tonight even closer yeah just as you were talking there we just had a little battle going on for seconds malloy in the renault popped in into second place again by the smallest of margins of four thousandths between himself and jesse who put managed wow. to pop it into second again they're so close behind but again there's still six tenths separating blizzard and these guys behind so you can just see how much I think the pad I think has got the advantage in the wet conditions but we'll yeah. see, we'll see I how he gets on I wonder how many people are on a pad on here oh, I, I know Blizzard, don't know. Blizzard is definitely on a pad I believe Malloy is also on a pad uh, other than that I'm not too sure I know Odems is on a pad as well so there's quite a few pad users in the prestige tier. 
probably. Yeah, and there must be a relief for them because obviously the patch is the patch is fixed for them, so uh, they can go for a full out more in Mexico than in other leagues, which is quite nice. So I wonder if that's going to make a difference. Well, it's certainly helping with uh, the tire management. They don't have to worry about the overheating because the Padres used to overheat the tires beyond belief with the uh, kind of aggressive inputs of the of the steering wheel that they had to deal with. But um, it's all it seems to be sorted now. Three minutes left on the clock and Blizzard's still six tenths of a second out in front. I wonder what Blizzard is thinking right now. Is, is he wanting to go out or does he think, oh, I'm going to get pole and uh, uh, chance it? But he'll, pro he'll probably go out, set one more lap, and then if no one beats him, he'll probably go into... Uh, go into the pits again and uh, I think we were predicting that Blizzard was possibly going to get pole and uh, looks like he's the favourite at the moment unless guys like Squee uh, like like uh, the top six are still pretty close together as well but Blizzard, Blizzard's already on a flyer but the top two, the top, battle for second is going to be interesting and possibly fourth, fifth and sixth as well um, it, it's going to be tight to be honest you've got to get track position as much as possible around here in Mexico because it is quite hard in some places to uh, get some grip, but it also depends on what tyres they're on as well. It is likely to be a one-stop here, but I have seen the two-stop work around here as well, so it's most likely going to be ultras to supers tonight. That is, of course, if it doesn't rain in the race as well. We're not too sure about that, but um, yeah, um, and also necess pole does not necessarily mean an advantage here in Mexico, especially with the 850 no. meter run down towards turn one, which is the longest run towards turn one on the calendar. And if that if you're on pole, I think you actually had a bit of a disadvantage in a way if you don't get a good start because you're going to get absolutely swamped into the break-ins on the turn one. So we'll see how things pan out come the race. I think Belgium, I think, is another one where you have more of an advantage starting from second or third. I think Italy as well, so I think Mexico is the third one as well. Um, some people could count Russia, but obviously Russia is quite a long straight, but obviously Mexico is quite longer. As uh, Everyone's pretty much going out now, apart from Wayne and uh, I think it's Scope. Yeah, Scope is uh, still on the pit, so I don't think they're going to get a lap in. So, they, uh, so Wayne at the moment is going to start eighth and... Uh, Scope is going to start 12th, but everyone else is going to get their final laps in uh, to make sure they can get pole. Lakitu's not, though, he's retired. Um, so, obviously, I was going to say they have free choice of tyres, but they all have free choice of tyres. So, uh, um, if we will probably climb his way through the field. I've seen him, obviously, in a few other rounds that he's done that, so he probably can tonight. There's a lot of people are struggling on these tyres already. It is getting a bit drier, but it looks like the rain is here to stay as the qualifying is about to finish. Yeah, you can see the amount of people backing up into each other inside in the stadium section and trying to get track position. People are going really, really slowly through that sector. Raf has retired. He's going to start at least fourth in fourth position. And we've got a real old train here. Oldham's is now getting a cheeky toe off of Squeezy in the Toro Rosso as they run down towards turn one there. So I think Blizzard is actually going to be the first of these guys to to set a lap. Let's see if he can go even quicker than a 23.7. Um, I'm surprised that Elk, who's all the way down in 14th, I would have expected a bit more from the Finn, but let's see if he can pull something out of the bag here, seeing how, how he can climb through the field. So, oh, well, Odems is going to start, isn't going to start anywhere up the field, but oh, Blizzard is going to lose that lap time for sure. Nearly lost yeah. it in the S section. Here he comes. He probably has. Yeah, Wayne's left the session. That's not good. Let's see. No. Now, has, has Blizzard... I wonder, has he managed to keep it together on the lap time? I don't know. It's I concerned. think... He's running a bit wide in corners, I've noticed, and... Uh, I think it's not going to be validated. Yeah. No, it's not. Malloy spun. That's his lap over. Uh, what about Jesse? He's coming through the last corner. I think that's Squeezy ahead of him, actually. It's or one. Sorry, it's Francis running through the last corner, getting sideways. He comes across the line. He cannot go faster. What about Squeezy in fifth position? Jesse can't go any quicker than he did. Here comes Squeezy to the line. He comes across the line. He goes second fast at 23.9. Fantastic lap from the Toro Rosso. And he is going to take the, the second front row position alongside Blizzard who gets another pole position for his tally with Squeezy, the only other man to get inside the 23s 
and comes within two tenths of a second of Blizzard, but Blizzard on pole once again, and that's what he needs to do if he wants to keep the Constructor's title alive. I swear, Blizzard probably is going to do well when Julian isn't here. <laughs> I swear that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah, so is that going to be the case tonight? I wonder. I think it might be, you know. But Blizzard was untouchable in, in pole. He's pretty much, he was on pole pretty much from around about 10 minutes to go and pretty much stayed there. So he, his, his, his bottled lap on, on the last lap was probably still going to be enough to get pole anyway. So um, just because how fast he is around this track. Confirmation of results then. Sque Blizzard takes pole by two tenths of a second over Squeezy Malloy in P3 with a griff fantastic performance from him there. Jesse P4, Rafa in P5, Odems in P6, Ollie in P7, MLA in P8, Wayne in P9, and Francis in P10. So it's actually, it ended up actually being quite close in the end with a second separating the top 10. Lakitu, Schofielder, James Slater, and LQ round out the grid for the Mexican Grand Prix. Now, it be interesting to see when we come to the pre-grid, what strategies people are on? Yep, as they get free free tire choice, of course, which means I'll have, have a bit longer to decide which one will be best for them. But um, they probably have figured it out early on, and luckily it is a dry race anyway. So it's looking like it to be a dry race anyway, because it's nice and sunny, but nice and hot as well. So reminder on tire choices today: it's not going to be the hypers, the ultras and the supers like we said earlier on so those are the free tires on offer we could see someone go and uh, put on a set of hypers towards the end and get a bit of a fastest lap glory but um unfortunately there is no point for fastest lap but uh we could have someone climb their way through the field and uh, possibly uh, catch up to the top guys but blizzard is going to be the one that leads the way but uh he might be at a disadvantage because obviously the long run into turn one we'll just have to uh Wait and see as the drivers are about to ready up. Indeed, and it obviously gives us an opportunity to promote March 29th with the Champions Race for Charity. The one hub race are going to be running here. 29th of March at 8pm, three charities and a full grid of previous champions in one hub. It's going to be a fantastic event. And obviously going to be supporting Health for Heroes, Mental Health Foundation and Cancer Research UK. So if you can make yourself uh, available to come and watch the stream then, make sure you do. You're going to have Odems and Kieran McGinley on comms. I think it's going to be an amazing event. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be watching that because any event for charity is probably going to be a great cause for these guys. So uh, make sure you do watch. There are some famous names uh, that I do recognise. So it'll be nice to see them race again that we haven't seen in a while. So... Um, that is going to be a week after the last race, the last race in uh, Abu Dhabi. So, uh, so you got Abu Dhabi, and then you got uh, the other race, which I do believe is in Abu Dhabi as well. So you got two double doses of Abu Dhabi in two weeks. So, yeah, has, let, let's look at the tyres actually. Interesting, um, interesting tyre mix up actually. Um, only one driver has opted for the hyper softs, and that's Malloy. Everybody else seems to go for the either the ultras or the super softs. So I wonder, the guys on the Ultrasofts, are they going to maybe try the two-stop? Hmm. If they can go Ultra, it Ultra Hyper, potentially. Um, we'll see how things pan out. This is going to make it for an, a very interesting shake-up and strategy. Squeezy's going to obviously go the longest of the lot on the Supersofts, but we have the three, the three different ty tire compounds in the top three, so... Some interesting tire mix-ups here, but we'll see... Um, how things end up in the grand scheme of things, so I think a little bit more people are actually going to try the two-stop than they thought. Yeah, which is more than I've seen in other league races, but uh, I think it just goes to show it probably might be faster. And uh, Squeezy just got disqualified. Uh, as did Blizzard. As always... <laughs> Am I surprised? Pretty much no. As uh, um, but It will be a disadvantage in terms of tyre wear anyway. They won't get as much tyre warmth going into the race because they'll get, get it colder, so... And typical, it has to be the top two. <laughs> of course it's the top so, two, right. Blizzard's going to have absolutely no tyre temperature, so keep an eye out for Malloy off the start. He's on the stickiest compound of tyres in the Hypersauce, but now we wait for Elku to round out in the final position on the grid. And we're about to get underway for round 19. That's a beautiful camera angle of the bloody stadium. Here we go. Five red lights for round 19 at the prestige tier. 
Lights out, and away we go. Blizzard seems to get away well. Malloy has got the best start though. As you can see, he's jumped the guys in on, this, on the first row. And here he comes to maybe try and challenge for the lead of the race here. Running down towards turn one. Easy ahead of Blizzard. He's alongside Blizzard into turn number one. Look at the Haas in the background of Jesse trying to make his way through as well. Malloy trying to come around the outside. Looks like Blizzard's got the whole shot into turn one though. And he has. So he's going to hold on for now. Squeezy, all this contact in the background. Squeezy's around. And that's a disaster for the Tara Rosso as they all squabble for position. They're three wide here between the, the, the two Red Bulls. I'm sorry, a Tar Russell Red Bull and a McLaren back here as MLA makes his way up through the field as well. That looks like Odin's fighting with Jesse as well. There's loads happening here. But again, it was Malloy with the best start on the stickiest compound here. He's got to be challenging Blizzard for the lead of this race, but they're already checking out from Rafa, Jesse, Odin's, MLA, Francis, Wayne, and LQ. All separated quite close already, and uh, Squeezy did, did just lose it at the start, but Blizzard still managing to pull, pull away, so um, put the, probably the advantage Squeezy had going into turn one cost him a little bit, but I'm quite surprised some of these guys actually managed to avoid that, as we've got Eco and Ollie trying to battle it on the stadium section there, as uh, Ollie gets it done, only just as Elku gets the switch back, pretty much, yes he does, up into ninth already, as... Uh, we, we already have someone in the pit to force India, Rikitu. that is Rikitu. That's for wing damage, just contact I think. Possibly could have been him that got involved with Squeezy, got turned around. Actually I think it was Rafa who maybe sent him around. But Rafa trying to latch on to the back of Malloy and Blizzard. Blizzard already trying to uh, get over uh, Malloy and Rafa. Because uh, realistically those hyperstops are going to last about 5 laps, not long at all. But yeah, um, interesting start. I just couldn't quite get the whole shot, but it was still a really, really brilliant start from him. So let's have a look at yeah, the biggest I... movers. Uh, well, let's see who made the biggest move through the field. It's actually Francis, uh, sorry, Elku from the back of the grid to 10th. And Francis up from, uh, that'll be 10th to 7th. So not too bad through the field. No massive movers. But not overly not bad. And Francis gets a penalty within the first two laps. <laughs> The first penalty, you don't really want to get that glory, really. He did get uh, five points deducted from his championship from last week due to the contact he had with Julian as well. So um, hopefully he won't have that much bad luck in this race. As he's already got Wayne catching up as well on the stadium section. And uh, he's managing to cover off quite well already so far. The biggest loser's definitely got to be Squeezy and Lakitu as well. And uh, uh, Ollie has dropped a few positions as well as... Uh, Malloy's still mm, right behind Wayne. Blizzard, but we got Wayne. Around the outside so, of turn one. Can he get it done? No. Not quite. That's a corner cut, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the best way to take uh, the first couple of turns, Wayne. But um, that is, I think, equal amount of penalties for Wayne and Francis at the moment. But uh, Francis is not that far behind MLA, though, so... This could be an interesting scrap. Oh, they, oh, Francis almost went off the circuit. That's almost pretty much a warning, I think, for him. That was right now. A so, yeah. As he's probably going to be the quickest guy on circuit to uh, get multiple warnings in the, in the space of a few laps. So he's probably get. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> but as I think Wayne is still catching up anyway, um, as, mo well, as well as most of the other guys here. But. Everyone else is pretty much stuck at the moment as uh, I think Jesse's about w almost DRS range of Rafa as well, so uh, yeah, right the, for podium. The only person with DRS in this train I think is actually going to be Old M, so I'll keep an eye as they run down the main straight because the toll around here is absolutely huge. Actually, I think Jesse has got DRS. It's kind of hard to tell with that Haas, but uh, I don't think he has DRS, so you can see... Odem's closing up and in the back, and you can just see Wayne closing right up to the back of Jessica. Uh, uh, Jessica Francis, right here, as he <laughs> goes into the first corner, locks up a little bit. Can Francis maybe uh, defend from Wayne here? He's going to have the benefit of an extra bit of DRS to keep, try and keep himself ahead, but Wayne's going to come at him here on the outside line. Francis goes defensive, runs a bit deep, but, he, but the benefit of this, the slow right hander should enable him to just keep ahead for now. Francis is just a little bit stuck behind, but Oldham, as you can see, is right up behind the Haas of Jesse. And uh, looking quick at those. Oh, he's lost it as soon as I said that. <laughs> Almost put it in the wall. And nicely held there. As now the two TTG boys have picked up penalties already. Let's see how are Malloy's tyres holding up. Looking, not looking too bad, but I think 
they're going to be reaching the end of their life very shortly. Um, as far as Odems is concerned, on my screen it looked like he didn't hit the ward, ward, ward at all. It was just like uh, one minute it was on one part of the track and one minute it was on the other. So it looked like it was a desync there. Yeah. So, so, GG Cody. <laughs> as uh, Blizz is already pulling away and Squeezy's finding some good pace as well in the tour. Ross also finding some uh, Old M series comes there. for P3, P4, in should I say, up the inside. Does he go deep? Yes, but Jesse, I think, is not going to be going to be quite able to hold on to that and Odom's now into P4 and he is on the hardest compound of tyre available here today and you can just see in the background looks like Francis might have a little think of a move on Mark here he's going to come around the outside of the next corner he's going to have a go all the way around the outside switch to the inside MLA is going to fight it on the outside if he can he's still there on the outside and now the Fr McLaren of Wayne follows through as well so Mark's lost two positions in two corners and that's a real shame for him as he fights to keep the Constructor's title alive for uh, Mercedes, or try to win the Constructor, should I say. Blizzard is trying to keep it alive, but Mark losing two positions there in the space of two corners. Just got a little bit mugged. Yeah, uh, he he did look like come spark there on those set of ultras at the moment, but uh, um, we do have the Red Bull, I think, behind on the supers and pretty much everyone else around him on the ultras, so... Um, that was unfortunate, but he can bounce back going in, going into the rest of the race, depending on when everyone else chooses to pit as well. As uh, I don't think Mar uh, Odem is not close enough to make a move on P3 right now, but uh, Jesse is uh, catching up to Odem pretty quickly again. And so is Wayne on fr uh, France, oh. I think, as well. Ollie tried a little that dive a on MLA right there. Wow. Didn't quite get it done, but a little bit messy but I uh, managed to yeah. keep it all together. Yeah, so much battles happening in the space of six laps already, and uh, just go shout how competitive that this league is already in one of. And Squeezy almost, oh, that was a bit of a slide from Squeezy on my screen, as a uh, tight, tight entry into that second set to there from uh, Squeezy to battle for pretty much seven, no, eight from between MLA. Ollie and Squeezy coming up as well. So very, very tight there. Um, we've got a Rebel and a Tsol. I think that was probably a warning from Ollie there as uh, he just uh, went off the track a little bit. But as they both go into the stadium section, not quite under DRS range yet. Probably going to get it in the final corner, but uh, very, very tight. We'll see if they're gonna, if any of these guys are going to make a move into turn one. But Squeezy's looking for Ollie or MLA to make a mistake. I don't think MLA, has he got DRS? I think he does just about, so I think he might be able to hold on, depending on how much of an overspeed all he no, does. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he, doesn't have an, he doesn't have the overspeed at all towards turn one, and Mark's going to hold on for now. As Wayne, I tell you what, he's mounting the pressure, but he's picked up another penalty. Francis runs off the track through turn four. Now, can Wayne maybe try a little cheeky dive bomb here? Is he going to try it? No, he doesn't quite have the... The ability to do so. Francis parks the car on the apex. Uh, meanwhile, Blizzard, he is now three seconds clear out front in the Saubert. And he's doing exactly what he needs to do to keep this Constructors title alive for Saubert. As, as now Rafa, as Malloy's Hypersoft start to die, Rafa's starting to put the pressure on for P2. Yes, the Hypersofts don't last very long on this, on this circuit, so... Um... So I think Malloy might have made a little bit of a mistake going on those hypers, but as uh, we've got Ollie and Squeezy, oh, that was very tight. That was very tight on that stadium section. Usually I don't see many people overtaking that, but uh, uh, I think Squeezy uh, had the edge there. Ollie's going to get another chance going into turn one. He's going to get a DRS. Squeezy, I think, might just have DRS, but I think Ollie made a bit more of an advantage. Ollie's going to take the left-hand side of... The long straight going into turn one is is, is Squeezy going to try and uh, defend? Yes, he does as he holds on. Oh, he's not quite to make the move just yet, but uh, very very tight between uh, the TTG TTG boys. Look at, look at Wayne um, and Francis going at it as well up ahead. He's trying to come around the outside of Francis. He's battling away. Uh, as we as we were looking at that battle, there we saw the swap for second place actually happen between Rafa and Malloy. So those tires are really going off on that Renault and Wayne is desperate to get past Francis now 
As he, oh, he loses the back end through there. He might actually be vulnerable to Mark now as they run through the S section. As the, just the momentum carries you through that S section, but mla has got to watch his mirrors for Squeezy, who managed to get the move on. He's going to try and stay in the section. Yes, he is down the inside of the Mercedes, runs him out of road there. Firm but fair. As Mark sticks it back up the inside of the Toro Rosso, but the Toro Rosso has got it done. And Squeezy trying to make up for that first lap incident and try to get himself back through the field, but MLA falling away, and this is not what he needs. Even though it is, even though MLA won't have anything to lose if they don't win the Constructors now, it will give Blizzard and Josh, who's not here tonight, uh, more of a psychological advantage going into the final uh, two rounds. Because obviously we got Mexico, and then we got Brazil, and then we got Abu Dhabi, so they've, they've got basically oh. left rounds to do it in. Oh, and uh, I just El seen someone get a time penalty. I didn't quite see who that was. That's, that's LQ off the road, actually, in turn one. He locked up, and that's actually Odem's past Malloy for P3. So Malloy is really struggling now on those Pipers. As you can see, they're just falling off. I'm sure he's going to be into the pit lane this lap. Blizzard now picks up a penalty, and that's not, that has been the story of the season, really. Others have kept it clean. He's got the penalty, and ultimately it's come back to bite him. So let's keep an eye on whether he can keep... The rest, keep the rest of the race between the lines. Malloy has got to box now. He's brought those hypersofts eight laps, which is a long old time. And you can see the blistering on the left front, especially. Uh, he's going to be in for some new boots. Let's see. Surely he comes into the pit lane, and he does yeah. indeed. So I'm sure. Oh, don't bin it in the pit wall there. Oh, that was very close. Almost a David Coulthard esque instant there. Yeah, we don't want to wrap the curve. What happened to him? Um... But, uh, yeah, as he's, as he's probably going to change, I think, for Seb Ultras. Yes, he, he is. is. That was a bit pit stop from Malloy right. there. It's just what he needs. So he's going for the two-stop, then. Yeah, by the looks of things. Uh, LQ's as, out. Uh, First oh, retirement. He's out. I'm just riding on board There's with uh, Lakeith to try and see where that was. Looks like it was in the last corner. Yeah, it must have been. So... Ever, 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 I was going to say there was no, no, be no retirements. I was quite shocked that there'd be no retirements. Um, but oh, obviously we just had Squeezy just the one. Squeezy and Wayne, sorry to cut across. Squeezy and Wayne battling, and, and Squeezy with a really cheeky move up the inside of Wayne caught him off guard. And Squeezy really starting to push his way through the field now. Oldham's picks up a penalty, so everybody's picking up, uh, slowly beginning to pick up the penalties now, as the track limits are here are quite strict in Mexico. And he starts. Yeah, to, he's, st are. He, he's starting to chip away at uh, the gap between himself and Rafa. And Wayne, MLA, and Squeezy. Squeezy looks like the danger man. Honestly, he looks like he's going very, very quickly on those super softs. Try and see if he can stick with his teammate now. Because they're on similar strategy, and they can stretch their super softs in longer than everybody else, but. That means they'll probably go lower down the field. Um, well, it does depend on the gaps and when everyone else pits, of course. As a yeah, it sh it should be fun with a mix of strategies. I must say, it's everybody. I think I'm not sure when the ultra soft people are meant to pit. Yeah, so well, I can't remember. Yeah, it's been a little while since I did, since I did Mexico, but I would imagine it's yeah, going to be around <laughs> lap 15. I would reckon. I think they could bring them about that far, bit about half distance. We'll see Scopefielder and James Slater having a battle for the last points position. Scopefielder dives it up the inside there. Can James Slater come back at him, maybe? With the cup back on the way out? I think he might be able to get the cup back here. He's slipping back up the inside here in the stadium section. The crowd are loving this one. Battle for 10th place, last points position. Scopefielder holds it around the outside. So I think he's going to hold on to that one, and he does indeed do so in the Williams. Um, James Slater, obviously, I believe he was driver of the day last week. So um, um, he's, he's wanting to get some good results yeah he's put in some decent um, some decent performances over the over the course of the season uh, and showing last week that he can indeed uh, put it to the big guys but let's see I think it's gonna be a swap between the Toro Rosses here Squeezy's caught up to Francis and Francis I don't think he's gonna fight that at all he lets him straight through and uh, let's see if there's any any moves in the background MLA is starting to remount the pressure on Wayne and Ollie in behind him as well. So Mark really needs to get a move on here if he wants to try and secure the constructors. He needs to make sure that Sauber, that the Blizzard pretty much doesn't outscore him by 14. 
So he's got a bit of a he's got a bit of a task to do to climb himself back through the field to make sure that that happens. He uh, and now Raf has got a penalty. Now all the top three have got a penalty, which is uh, which is going to balance, which means we still have a, a a genuine battle for the lead. Which is good because we don't want a race decided for penalties, but that means uh, Blizzard could take it. A little bit easy if he wanted to, and uh, oh, uh, Ollie's still trying to sneak it up the inside of MLA. MLA went, MLA went defensive. Oh. He's, he's going to run wide through the stadium section, and Ollie has, has uh, got straight ahead there into the stadium section, and that was just a little tiny error from MLA, a little bit too deep on the brakes, and Ollie takes advantage and gets through to P8. Francis is now into the pit lane. That's an early stop for the supers. Yeah, um, that's. that's that's okay. earlier than the ultras. Yeah, that's really interesting. Was is he going? He's gone onto the set of the hypersofts. Okay, that's an interesting strategy call there. So you know, he's committed himself to a two-stop. And I just see in Malloy getting past James Slater down the straight. And that's an easy move. So now Francis has changed to the two-stop. I'm not sure if that was the plan all along. Well, that's a really interesting call. That's going to really shake things up a little bit. Usually, if people were doing the, uh, oh, as Malloy is, uh, I think, got the move done on scope or in uh, P T10, so he's now up his P9. I thought if people were doing the, the two stop, they would do ultras to ultras to uh, hypers. I wouldn't put a hyper soft in the middle of the strategy there because the hypers don't last that long. But that means I'll probably have to put the same oh, time as the other on Wayne. Here comes Ollie on Wayne up the inside of the stadium section. That's his favourite place to overtake here. So yeah. Into P6, and I can just see Oldems is within DRS range of P number two. Let's see if he can mount the move on Rafa here. Rafa previously known as Retrix. That's how well I knew him as the, in the start of the season, but we've got to get used to the name changes. And I think Francis changed his game attack, I think, from last week as well. So I'm still trying to get used to Francis Jessica instead of PSR Francis. <laughs> It yeah. is quite difficult, but... And Wayne coming, trying to come back past around the outside of turn one. Not going to quite make that work. And, oh, there's a little bit of contact there. It's all a little bit of contact in the rear. Wayne's going to lose the rear end. And Mark had to get out of the, get out of the gas pedal to, to keep him out of the rear end. And he's looking for room that just isn't there. As Mark tries to come back at him around the outside. And now turn number five sweeps around the outside. Lovely move from the Mercedes. And it, this is exactly what he needs to do. That's the third penalty for Francis now. In, in uh, P number 12. So, not... I did recall we get loads of penalties last week as well, so it is a pretty much the norm for him right now. <laughs> yep, so as you can see, I think the super stuff is starting to go off because now Odems, it has closed up hugely to the back of Rafa in that lap alone. As we've got a yellow flag sector 2, and Ollie is now Ollie. out of the race. Now, that has happened in the S section, I believe. Let's have a look on board with Malloy, and yes, it has. He slammed into the wall on the right hand side, and Malloy just misses him. On the way through, he's sitting on the racing line there in a really bad position, and I'm, I'm sh there really should be a safety car there. But anyway, here we go. Move for P2 in this race, and straight through goes Marquez is there. And what about Squeezy on Jesse? Is he going to make the move? He does indeed. So Squeezy's making a fantastic drive back through the field. Remember, he spun to the back of the grid on lap one. This is a fantastic drive from him, Wayne and MLA into the pit lane. That's onto the supers. They're going to go to the end of this race I would I would imagine and here comes Francis on James Slater for P number 8 yes I think apart from Francis on the hypers it just goes to show that the ultras are pretty much dying at this stage at the moment and uh, the supers are starting to come to its own a little bit so uh, yeah, we um, will see the ultras start to uh, think twice a little bit more in these next few laps well I mean l let's judge by the fact that uh, Odems has taken about a second out of Blizzard on that lap alone so that shows you how much these tires are going up. Blizzard is struggling through that sector. You can see how much uh, Olems has closed up. He's closed up hugely. And yes, now, he has. Blizzard is going to have to dive into the pit lane, surely. You can see how much time he's losing. And in he comes on lap number 15. My prediction, exactly. So, Olems takes the lead of the Mexican Grand Prix. Rafa's going to follow Blizzard into the pit lane. Squeeze, Squeeze is going to stay out and... Jesse's going to follow through now. Let's have a look as Blizzard will go on to a set of the Super Softs and he's going to go... I thought he was on the on the two stop. They've committed themselves to the one. And that's the fourth penalty for Francis. How is he getting these many penalties? And it looks like... Got to be like, careful. He is qualified. Yeah. 
France is going to come out ahead of uh, the re the guys that were in the pit lane there. Apart from Blizzard, so Blizzard now needs to get the hammer down. As all them's got yep. some good good pace on those super soft tires. Yeah, Pete's doing very well to uh, try and get those two around about lap 20-25, as what I'm calling anyway. And Lakia just getting another penalty there. The gap between Marquez and uh, Marquez, I need to stop calling Marquez. Uh, Odems and Blizzard is around about 17 seconds, so it's gonna it's gonna be tight if Mar if uh, Odems goes ahead of him or go in front of him and gets that cut. But it does depend if Blizzard can find some time on him in his next couple of laps, which. Uh, Debating on the, judging on the length of his tyres, I think Blizzard could possibly uh, catch up to uh, Malloy, who's around about two seconds. So, obviously, Malloy will have to pit again for another two-stop. And I thought Blizz was going to go on the two-stop as well, but he's opted for the one-stop. So, yeah. pretty much doing the opposite to what the others are doing. Yeah, probably the safest option to keep the constructors alive here. Because MLA is all the way down in 10th. Um, so... Malloy 10 seconds behind Squeezy, who's, who's now who's a further 4 seconds back from our race leader. And you can see Blizzard's uh, absolutely closing in like a missile on Malloy. So you can see Blizzard will have the pace in the early uh, part of this stint, but as those super soft start to wear a little bit, then OLMs will have the benefit of the fresher tyres in the later part as Rafa streaks past Scofielder, who's on really, really old super softs at this stage. 16 uh, laps as well. Same yeah. as uh, Odems and Squeezy, so... Props to them for getting those tyres up for that long, but that's how long they last, roughly, in Mexico, so... Not yeah, really I, that surprised, but... I, th I think we're going to see Odems in, because I think he's losing a lot of time to Squeezy on that lap. He's lost a lot of time to Squeezy. I, I don't be surprised if he pits. No, he's going to stay out. He lost about a second there to Squeezy, who's actually putting in uh, some really fast times. And Blizzard, I think, has caught Malloy in the correct position for um, getting past. Just going to get the DRS and streak straight past him. Didn't even need the DRS, almost. And he's no. going to streak past into third place. He was on the back of Malloy pretty much for the whole of that stadium section. And uh, he was looking on ways to pounce, but... Uh... He just looked unstoppable due to the fact Malloy was on the ultras. They're about to die soon anyway, and Malloy just gets a three-second time penalty there. And Blizzard gets and another so penalty. Blizzard. Yeah, that, now that's an interesting, uh, an interesting penalty. Um, I don't know what's happening with Odens, but he's really, really struggling. And uh, do, do my eyes deceive me, or is he under AI control? Yes, he is. Yeah, oh, he dear. is struggling I th on those supers. I think he's disconnected, honestly. Look how much he's caused. Oh. Yeah, he's gone. I, th I can see the the, re the red X of doom and AI written over the top of his car. That's why Squeezy's closed in so much. I think Odems has actually disconnected, unbeknownst to no! us. No! I was, we were hoping he was going to get a win today. And uh, he's, he's uh, going to wait to Brazil or Abu Dhabi for him to get that win. He's been so close all season in Hungary and in USA, but... Here comes Squeezy I'd for the like... lead then. Yep, straight past. Um, I hope he's not under AI control. Either, either that or he's just really struggling. But I cannot see how he would lose that much time in two laps alone. I think. He's... I don't think he is under AI control. Because I think Squeezy had to work a little bit to uh, make his way past Marquez. Uh, Odems. Well, according to, to Nick, it's either a disconnection or it's his aunt yelling at him again. <laughs> or probably someone turning the router off. Um, to, he hasn't actually is, disconnected, aren't? so he's actually probably in the pause menu. Uh, yeah. But it, he had a real shot at the victory. That's the only thing. With uh, Blizzard's two penalties, he could have really challenged just to keep himself within three seconds, but Blizzard's going to uh, close up now as Squeezy's got to pit, so um, Blizzard's going to be absolutely miles out in front. Yeah. I was I was wondering at the time why Odims was uh, not on the pace, but that was probably due to that. So just right on board with Blizzard, just trying to get an idea. Is um, yeah, into the pit lane now comes Odems' AI. 
Five seconds stop, stop go. Stop. Right, that was definitely him. So. <laughs> yeah, that is Odin's right there. He's onto the Hypersofts. Um, he's onto the Hypersofts. Huh. And uh, he's... That was a long stop. For um, That was a long stop. France is getting a stop go. Oh, Francis, France uh, is out. He is out of the race. That leaves us with 11 drivers in the session. And interesting stuff. I don't know is all them's actually back now or what's the story? I'm really confused as to whether he's actually just running around. I'm confused as, as well. MLA past Scopefielder and Wayne and MLA they've been battling for the entire race almost. They're still together. Uh, the uh, McLaren and Mercedes. And we've got 16 laps left. Squeezy's still going on those super softs. And he's trying to bang on his head of the Ultrasofts, I would imagine, bring them 15 laps to the end. Yep. Uh, As see. Wayne and Emily have been on similar pace all race, so I wonder if they could go to the end. As Squeezy is going for his pit stop, 19 laps on a set of, uh, uh, well, it'll be 20 laps on a set of those super soft tyres, and uh, we're going to follow him now to see what tyres he's going to go on. Yep, it's Ultras, so... He's going to make it to the end, I'm sure, on those. So, similar strategy to Blizzard, except Blizzard started on the Ultras and the Super, uh, then went on to the Super. Squeedy started on the Supers and went to the Ultras. So, uh, yeah, those two definitely playing it safe, but I think that's what's helping Squeedy right now. You know, Rafa, if he can catch up to Malloy and pass him, he's actually, I think, still in with a chance of a victory here. Yes. Um, if he doesn't have more than one penalty, that is. But if he only has the one, he needs to stay within about three seconds. So if he can close the gap down a little bit, then maybe he could potentially have a little sniff of the race victory. I will check penalties uh, pretty soon as well. So um, I'll check it just towards the end, just to make sure. Yeah, well, Blizzard's opening the gap now. Over Malloy. Six. But, but um, Raph is closing in on him quite rapidly too. Yes, Rafa's definitely the dark horse in this race so far. He, I need to check where he started actually. He started fifth and made all the way up to third. And now he's got to challenge Malloy for second place. I think Rafa's got less penalties than Malloy, but I will check in a minute. So probably Rafa's got the slight edge, but he hasn't got DRS range at the moment. So I don't think, really no, he's not going to get him done at this lap. But I think potentially he could get it done the next lap as he's uh, finding a few more attempts in that first few corners. Yes, yeah, so he got detection for the next part. Uh, no, detection happens down the straight. Uh, Wayne and MLA still together. Wayne with another penalty. That's his fourth penalty, I think. So that's um, that's not going to be good. MLA could make up a good few positions on penalties here, actually, uh, if he keeps it uh, together. Now, Wayne's still sticking behind in detector two. Not too long left in this race now, actually. Uh, about no, thir it's 13 not. laps. And Rafa getting right up on the gearbox and Malloy through the S section. See how much time he gains on the fresh, fresh superstars touching the rear almost of Malloy. Malloy goes defensive. He's not going to want to give up this position too easily. But he's actually going to have to box very shortly because those ultra are only going to last about 15 laps. Squeezy with another penalty there. He's on the back of uh, MLA and uh, of Wayne. He's actually going for a move on Wayne, slipping it up the inside. He's on fresh ultra softs. And making his way back through the field now, so nicely done. But here we go for P2 between Malloy and Rafa. Rafa's going to have the edge here onto the start, finish straight, and he easily gets that move done there. Up into P2. What a great job from Rafa. He's around eight seconds off Blizzard now. So, And also we've got Squeezy and MLA fighting for position again as a... Uh, Squeezy manages to hold on to P5, but MLA just caught on the back a little bit with Wayne not that far behind. Yeah, but um, just hearing that if Blizzard wins, MLA needs fourth to win the Constructors. So he's currently sitting P6, but I don't know how it's going to work out on penalties, honestly. Um, I will check quickly whilst you're talking. <laughs> yeah, um, but potentially... Uh, and Malloy is going to have to make another stop, so he'll fl flick into P5. So if he can just keep it clean, he might actually just about be able to wrap it up if he just keeps it clean. 
for the rest of this race. Uh, I think Emily Rafa's is got one penalty. One penalty versus Blizzard's two. So he, so... Needs, he needs to pause within three seconds. Yes. Uh, I will Emma... check the others in a minute, but... As Malloy goes into the pits, oh yeah, because he's on a two-stop. Yeah, he's on the two-stop. Jesse has got another penalty. That's his second one, I think. And I think MLA is actually penalty-free, but he's going to have to watch his mirrors for the McLaren of Wayne, who's actually who's spoiling his party right now. He needs to hold on to this one if he really wants a chance at the Constructors' title, and Wayne's going to ruin it for him by coming around the outside. MLA goes super deep on the brakes and manages to hold it together and stays in P5 for now but the crucial position is p4 and that's where he needs to be and i think he might actually be on penalty squeezy's got two jesse's also got two he could end up on the podium and wayne's can maybe ha gonna have an opportunity here and but also remember wayne's got four penalties <laughs> so actually mla is in a good position yes he is and uh if squeezy gets more penalties then this could be a, a MLA's constructor's title to win, and uh, probably Julian will be pretty happy that MLA's done his part if he keeps this up. And obviously yeah. Blizzard doing his part at the moment. Still in the lead, 9.8 seconds, wow. He's on a roll right now. Very much on a roll. It'd be really nice for MLA to win the constructors from Mercedes in his final season of League Racing and one hub uh, to round out a stellar career as the key to get another penalty. Lap 25 of 36, and Blizzard now 10 seconds clear out front with 11 laps to go. Yes, as uh, Squeezy's uh, trying to catch on the back of Jesse as well, so uh, yeah, he, he's, on for, he's on for final podium as well if he keeps it up, but uh, probably not due to penalties. <laughs> As uh, probably another track where it has been started on penalties. Malloy gets managed to make his way past James Slater in the Force India. As Malloy's now up into yeah P number eight right now as he climbs his way. He's about three seconds in behind uh, Odems in P7. Uh, obviously Odems is on penalties as well, so Malloy could potentially get P7 in this race if he keeps uh, it up. Yeah, and Squeezy getting right up behind Jesse through the S section. Got another penalty, though. That's nine seconds of penalty versus Jesse's uh, six seconds. He's going to come try and come around the S. It's really difficult to do it there, so he's going to have to back out of that one. And just hold, sta hold station for now. He'll have the DRS, so he just needs to be patient. And wait for his opportunity. He'll be down the main straight, but he needs to pull three seconds to have a chance at the podium. So here we go with yes, the DRS. Yes, and it's not going to be easy. That's no, not going to be easy. Jesse with decent straight line speed, and that has with Squeezy comes steaming past. But as you can see on the telemetry, he's actually on marginal fuel, so he's going to have to do some fuel saving, and he's out of ERS. So he's been pushing hard to keep himself there. We've got 10 laps left to go. That battle between Wayne and MLA still rages on behind. Malloy now past uh, the AI of Odems, who's running around on the Hypersofts. And pity That's for him. And, and as you were just saying about Malloy, he just got another penalty. <laughs> yeah, he so did indeed. He is, so he did rack up on penalties at the moment. I wonder what the role of Rain is going to be in this situation and uh, about the constructors, actually. Will he want to see Salva uh, take this to another race or will he want to help MLA? It looks like at this, it looks like at this stage he wants to help, he wants to go on the full attack at this rate. And concentrate on his own race because um, they've been fighting all race and they're doing quite well as well but L MLA just having that slight edge even though they want to similar ties as well but penalties might come into play we'll have to find out as Wayne has got too much right now MLA's pretty much got the same I think yeah MLA he needs to stay within six seconds of Jesse to secure that fourth place he's secure in fifth right now because Wayne's got too many penalties to warrant that doesn't, it's not going to stop Wayne from having a pop at him nonetheless down the inside of turn number one. Is he going to get it stopped? He does. I don't think Mark's going to fight that too hard. I think he knows that he just needs to hold station where he is. Uh, Wayne's got 12 seconds of penalties. He's going to drop uh, behind, even down to seventh place at this rate. But uh, Blizzard clear out front, as you can see. 
Yeah, now down, now up to 10.3 seconds. Even though Rafa is still doing well to uh, uh, extend the gap to Squeezy, Blizz, Blizzard is quite comfortably, because Blizzard's only got two penalties, and he's put comfortably still going to get the win pretty much by three or four seconds due to penalties, so... Uh, yeah. Luckily, his mistakes didn't cost him a little bit, but if he gets one more penalty, then uh, it can cost him ever so slightly. So... Yep, so lap 28 of 36. MLA trying to stick on the back of of Wayne just to make sure he needs to stick in that in that comfort zone. But he's starting to just drop away a little bit. If he, if he comes out of that six second buffer, he's going to finish in P5 and the Constructors is going to continue until Brazil. Uh, that is, of course, unless Blizzard has an absolute disaster up front. Which at this point, I don't think is going to happen. He's led every single lap of this race. Pretty much from start to finish, apart from the times where other people around him have had to pit. He's, he's, been, he's been pretty much a one-horse race for him right now, like time trial laps. But uh, he, I can tell he likes Mexico and uh, he's probably had a little bit less pressure this week due to the fact that he has no title to contend with in the drivers and... His main rival, Julian, isn't here, so um, he is back to his, uh, where he's in his other leagues, really, to be honest, which is what he's doing right now. But I wonder how MLA is going to do on these final laps. He must, his heart must be racing right now, because <laughs> I know he's got the hunger in his eyes and he wants to do the job for Julian, Julian today. Yeah, uh, Julian, of course, the driver's title winner in uh, for Mercedes and wrap up a perfect season for them with the constructors title Julian absolutely smashed it out of the park this season he missed three rounds and still won by 120 points that just shows you how dominant he was in the early part of the season and that wasn't even down to any to uh, to him winning every race it was actually just down to consistency everybody else was crashing around him and he just kept it nice and clean and kept it consistent and what I've seen from other championship consistency is key usually in a uh the difference between winning or losing a title and that's what Julian has been doing all season and uh, I have been watching Prestige all season and uh, the amount of dominance he has shown pretty much all season long has been remarkable so I wonder if he stays in next season I think he's going to be a formidable force but obviously MLA's last season here in One Hub he wants to make a statement right now today and uh, Wayne's already pulling away from MLA but don't forget, MLA, uh, uh, Wayne's got loads more penalties than him, so uh, MLA can afford to stay where he is at the moment for fifth. Um, Wayne is about... I, Wayne's a, I'm just checking the gap between him and Jesse. It's about 4.3 seconds. Yeah, a spanner in the works for these guys might actually be Malloy, because he's pulling about two seconds a lap out of them. So we'll see how he comes into play. He's on the yeah, newest he's on tires of anybody. He's Apart on a set of ultra soft tires. As James has just dropped it down into 11th there. Um, I think Scope must have got past him earlier on. And we might not have missed, we might have missed it earlier on. But six laps to go. MLA is getting closer to uh, Rain. He's in DRS Strange at the moment. Not quite making the move on this occasion though. Yeah. And... Um, those guys are, start, are slightly catching Jesse ahead. But you can also see Squeezy has slowly been chipping away at Rafa. And he's only two yeah. seconds behind them now. So potentially, a second place finish could be on the cards for Squeezy. Because he, remember, he started second place, spun on lap one, which is no fault of his own. He actually came together with this man. So this could be an interesting little battle. Now remember, Rafa's only got one penalty. Squeezy's got two. And Odems has just got another one. Now... I'm losing track oh, of how many penalties Oh dear God, he's died. Gone. Oh, God almighty. Odems dies in Mexico. Oh, oh, my God. I see where he died it as well. Died as well. It Her was, I... Oh, no, towards the start of the stadium, near the start of the stadium section. Couldn't he just... He had really good luck last week, of, apart from penalties, but it's gone from uh, good to worse for uh, uh, Odems there. He's probably going to wait another race to... Uh, Possibly gain a win. 
So the, de the death has occurred of the TikTok Meister Shin Odiemi. Uh, rest in peace. <laughs> um, yeah, OIP. Yeah, MLA's calls right back up to Wayne now. He's right on his tail. Yeah. He's about pretty much four. He was about four tenths at uh, last set, but now he's, now he's closing the gap to three tenths. So uh, even though he doesn't have to uh, get the move done on Wayne due to penalties, it would be nice for him to get it done on track. So I think the sooner he gets it done, the more close he can get to see if he could, if he could possibly get P over Jesse in penalty so uh, he wants to get that move done surely but as Wayne just had a little bit of a lock up in the stadium section that's probably given M uh, MLA a little bit more pace there yeah he's actually been uh, saving his ERS as you can see his arm's got full ERS to use so now he's on the attack now he'll have a lot of deployment to use down the main straight let's see if he can get the toll off of Wayne he'll have the benefit of the DRS toll but you can see the overspeed that these guys get. He's just not—he's not, not going to be close enough, but you can see how much it helps them. And he'll be able to have a second bite of the cherry down into turn number four. Uh, Wayne gets the exit. Wayne, oh, Emily gets a little bit sideways. There, it's going to compromise him. And they continue on their merry way. And Blizzard extends the gap 11.7 seconds in the lead now. And Rafa coming under pressure from Squeezy. Almost within DRS range. Yes, he's around about one second. He's got to find a few more tenths to get into DRS range, but uh, in order to uh, close the gap a little bit, it's al almost there. But he's uh, gone off a little bit on corners ever so slightly. I think, yep, yeah, he's in DRS range now. So. Uh, yeah, and the detection is, I think, there. So I think he's got it. Let's see as he runs over the DRS line. It's just a little bit further down this straight. Let's see the rear wing pop up, and there it is. So he has got DRS. On Not Rafa. quite enough at the moment, though. No, and Blizzard has begun lap 33 of 36. He's already he's halfway around the lap, should I say, at this point. Um, he is on his way to a dominant victory here in Mexico. Yes, as uh, Blizzard mainly only been winning when uh, June, June is here, but uh, shown his true form. But Squeezy's now ever so close on Rafa than he was before. Probably that DRS has definitely helped him on that uh, on that lap just now. They have three laps to do it, and uh, MLA is still getting close to Wayne. I'm it, it's, I'm still I'm still looking at these two battles. Uh, quite closely here to see if anyone's going to budge and make a move but uh, I think the closest one right now is I think between Squeezy and Rafa going through the stadium section Squeezy just found a lot of pace around th those final set that final set to that um, obviously he's on, he's on those ultras I don't know how he's managed to do that but he's doing that well as they're going through the start finish straight he's probably going to get more yeah. pace on the DRS yeah he's going to have so it yep yeah, he's going to take the right hand side Yep, he does that easily there from Squeezy there. So he takes P2 on the track. Well, we'll see. Due to penalties, I think Raph will still be P2. But yeah. And it's getting a little bit tentative between Wayne and MLA because these guys are falling a little bit behind. And we know that MLA needs the fourth place for the constructors. And as you can see, he's sitting at about 5.2 with two laps left to run next time by. Malloy picked up another penalty, which is going to help, but he's been closing in rapidly on these guys. He's 2.9 behind. He's going to catch them in the dying lap of this race. And MLA, heart pounding through his chest in his final Mexican Grand Prix. But Squeezy, you got to say, what a, what a drive from being spun around on the first lap dropping to the back of the grid he's second place now even though he's gonna he's still gonna pick up a podium from that nonetheless brilliant drive just goes to show never give up in league racing even if you ball it up the first lap it is not one in the first lap it is one when the track of flag falls and that's what squeezy's mentality is doing right now and uh i think the battles he's shown all race long has been absolutely astounding from him and uh He's managing. He's man he was managing to get the, the, the one-stop strategy, Ooh. like Blizzard. It's right on the cusp now. I think MLA starts. Five point nine. 
is the gap or between himself and so Jesse. Tight. If Jesse picks up another one, then that'll help him. But as you can see, you can see how quick Squeezy was. He's pulled as a, like nearly two. Nearly, he's pulled uh, about two seconds out of Blizzard alone on that lap. So you can see how how mu how much pace he had in that car in the final uh, few in the final few sections of that. But uh, Blizzard's about to begin the final lap very shortly. He's not going to be worried about what's happening behind him because he's he's got two penalties. Squeezy's got two penalties. Um, yeah. So it's not going to affect him at all, really. Nope, he's pretty much gonna. They're pretty much gonna be the same gap as they were uh, with each other. So that's put. It's probably gonna be pretty much. Well, it's not gonna be a fight for finish. It's pretty much gonna be a fight for himself uh, <laughs> to make sure he gets it to the end, which looks like he is going to. As he's starting the final lap of the Mexican Grand Prix, and he's pretty much a class out from start to finish. So still watching. It's, it's gonna is be MLA so going tight. To do it? It's gonna be so tight. For the constructors, he's ever title. so close on Wayne now. He's yeah, they're but they're, they're on twenty lap old super sauce. They're absolutely dead. MLA needs to make this move now, and I think he is going to be able to do it here with the DRS open. Five point eight seconds is the gap. He needs to keep it under that six seconds. Wayne does not fight him. Wayne holds behind MLA five point seven behind. Easy on course to take the constructors title from Mercedes in his final. Wayne gets another penalty. That's I think now 15 seconds of penalties. Yeah, I think that was. But we, we wait with bated breath to see if MLA can snatch the constructors in Mexico all on his own EO. But Blizzard, what an absolutely dominant drive. Start to finish, led almost every single lap. Pole position. The, the sprinklers and sparklers go off at the stadium section. He's going to be coming around to celebrate there. Coming through the last corner. VSR Blizzard wins. The Mexican Grand Prix in a stunning fashion. Squeezy picks up a penalty on the final corner. Now, how has he done that? Anyways. I really don't know. <laughs> oh, MLA's fallen out of the gap. 6.3. Rafa picks up P2. What? We watch as we as we watch. Can MLA Quite do breath. it? Can he do it? Jesse comes across Come the line to finish. MLA comes to the line. Is it enough? Yes. Oh, yes, it He's is. He's done it. He's won Mercedes have won the Constructors title. He's the... done it all on his own, by the skin of his teeth, I might add, so... Julian will be pretty pleased with that, that his wingman has done the job. Oh, Blizzard, the... Blizzard has done his job, but... MLA, MLA. hold it on with breath. Wow. Four tenths in the end was all it took. He snatches the Constructors title. Perfect year for Mercedes. Yes. It was like that in real life. And it's now replicated to the one hub prestige to all the constructors titles are now being wrapped up, I think. And Mercedes have done the double with Julian and the constructors. And with Blizzard taking the win there. And Squeezy, I think, I believe, got the fastest lap. So Blizzard didn't get the hat trick here today. But I think if I was going to go for driver of the day, out of a sheer... Not giving up at all and uh, making some good moves. I think I'll have to go for Squeezy. Yeah, I think so too. I'd agree on that. So, the Constructor's title is done. The Driver's title is done. So, nobody's got anything left to fight for. So, I think it's going to be an interesting last two rounds. People are just going to not care. But Blizzard takes the win. He ends up with three penalties in the end. Uh, we didn't see the third penalty. So, that was actually a little bit closer than we thought. He had nine seconds of penalties. So Rafa, in the end, was only four seconds away from taking that win. Squeezy in third position, MLA, fourth position, and no penalties. Snatches the Constructors title, Jesse P5. And Wayne with, ends up with 21 seconds of penalties. Scopefielder with no penalties actually managed to pick up some points in P8. The key to P9 and James Slater snatching the final point in P number 10. And I think he actually, no, he didn't get fast slap, um... That actually went to Blizzard as well, so Blizzard got the fastest lap as well. Nope, it wasn't. Nope, it wasn't. Nope, sorry, it, it was, was squeezy. squeezy. Fifteen. Two. One. Two. Yeah. That's gonna. So. Uh, that's, that's gonna do it for today, and we are gonna be seeing you next time out in Brazil, and I think that's gonna be an interesting one. Nothing left to fight for. All holds barred racing. That's what we want to see.
So we hope you'll join us then, same time next week, 9pm, for the 100 Racing Prestige tier. Also keep an eye out on the 29th of March for the Race for Charity, the Champions Race for Charity. We'll see you then, and we'll see you next time out in Brazil. Good night.